So it is five o'clock and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, thank you for coming to our technology hour tonight. Tonight we're gonna talk about uh, creating a CMA, which is a, um, a market analysis um, for or inside of Bright, okay? Um, there are multiple ways of doing it. If you talk to many agents, uh, they have a, you know, many different ways that they do it. Um, and this one tends to take a little bit longer depending on uh, depending on you know what kind of house you are analyzing um, today we're just going to do a really simple example with a condo where there are not too many variables just to give you like a high level understanding of what to do um, and i would definitely encourage you to practice um, with this video and if you have more questions feel free to ask um, i'm going to share my screen Okay, and everyone can see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> All right. So uh, the first thing that you will see um, when entering Bright is this, you know, is this front screen. Um, and actually what I'll do is I'll, I'll back up. So the reason that we actually do um, a CMA is because what we want to do is whether we're helping our clients buy or help our clients sell, we need to know what, what is the value of the property. Okay. And a lot of the times, or actually all the time, the value is actually determined by what the bank determines the value is because most people are, um, most people are using a bank to finance the home. Now, in those cases where people are using just their own cash, um, there is no appraisal that's needed. And the appraisal is the process in which the bank uses to determine what the, um, what the value of the home is. And this process that we're gonna go through today mirrors uh, as much as we can uh, to what the bank would do. Uh, the bank or the appraisers, they have you know, their own processes. <laughs> Um, which I am not 100% sure of. Um, but usually when I, you know, go through this process, I'm very close to what, to what they have given the value of the house to be. Um, and so um, this is pretty helpful for me. And so I thought I would just share it with you. Okay, so when you come in uh, to Bright, um, you will, we're going to assume that we're going to help our client buy, okay? And so uh, the property that, that we're looking at is 3,800, I think it's Fairfax. All right, so results, um, both of them are active. It's a, there's one one bedroom and then there's one, well, there's two one bedrooms. One of them is a one bath and one of them has two baths, okay? So you can see, you know, starting off the bat here that, you know, they have two different price ranges and they're not really that difference of floors. Um, you know, sometimes a difference would make, I mean, sometimes there's a difference on, you know, what side of the building it's on. Um, but it looks like I'm guessing because of, you know, the same endings, uh, the number endings, they are probably on the same side of the building. Um, this is the one that we're going to go ahead and, you know, help our clients buy. So, <clears throat> excuse me. What I'll do um, is I'll, I'll just click on that and then I'll create a cart. Okay. And creating a cart, essentially that allows you to go through and search for properties and then save them all into one place. Kind of like when you're shopping online, you have a cart. And every time you find something, you save it to the cart where well, that's the same thing, okay? So um, we'll create this cart and we will, um, we'll say new cart, cart name. Um, um, 1020 class, okay? Contact, I'll just put in my contact and hit save, okay? So now, because when I created this cart um, and I already had this selected, it added this one to that cart, okay? 
So now what I can do is I can go back to my criteria and because I had 3,800 Fairfax on there, I say, okay, now I, what I, the, the only way that we can determine what the value of something is, is to see what has sold that's very similar to it um, in the last six months, okay? So what we'll do is we'll look at anything that's closed. Um, we don't actually care about coming soon. So we say anything that's closed in the last six months, okay? So there are 11 things that's really good. So let's see, let's click on the results and we see, okay, we have all of these, um, all of these apartments that have closed in the last six months. Okay, and they're all one bedroom. So, um, but there's, so we have this one bedroom, two bath, and then we have a bunch of two bedroom, two bath. So um, what we can do is we can select the ones that are one bedroom, one bathroom. And because this one is a two bedroom or two bathroom, um, it's gonna be hard to, um, to compare this to this. So we'll just, we'll, just, we'll just adjust on the bathrooms, okay? So, and, and adjustments is one piece of doing the, the analysis. So what we can do is we can add this to our class cart also. So now we have four, um, four homes there. Now, sometimes what I'll do, like it, let's say that there's not enough, um, not enough that has sold there Sometimes what I will do is take a look a little bit farther back, just so I can get an idea of how things are selling um, in the property. So um, I'll go back and I'll go to, um, instead of one to 180 days, I'll just say anything from 1-1-2019 one, one, forward. So the plus is going to be forward. So starting at 1-1-2019 and going forward, anything that is sold, uh, I want to see it. So I do results. And these are, these are the homes that are pulled. Okay. Um, and a lot of times, like I said, if, if nothing has come up, so let, let's see if, yeah, so this one, it pulled another one bedroom and we see that, you know, it's even, you know, it's an even cheaper property. So this shows you that, you know, the closer that you get to when you're actually looking to purchase the property, the better off you'll get a feel of, you know, how well the property is selling. So um, one thing that we're seeing here is that, uh, and this one was sold by us as well. One thing that we're seeing here is that, you know, this property, it's been reduced. Um, and that's because of this this green arrow going down. Um, and if we click on this, we see it, well, it started off at 598 and now it's down to 550, right? Um, and there's, there's multiple reasons for that. Um, but the biggest reason is just that, you know, with COVID going on, uh, the, the, the market is very soft for condos um, and anything that has an elevator not a lot of people are wanting to buy. So depending on their motivation for, for selling, um, you know, they, they may be able, they may have to sell for less than what these numbers are gonna show, but we're just gonna kind of leave that to the side and we're gonna go through what the same process that we would use um, at, at any other time, okay? So we have our information, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we have our information and I go to view. So I'm viewing my cart. And so now um, I click on all of these and I click action and then I come down to CMA. Okay. Now, um, this CMA, so your contact would be your client's contact information. So I'm just gonna put in my contact information here. Um, and then 
we'll move over to the next page, which is, or the next, the next tab, which is pages. Okay. So one thing that I would um, encourage you all to do is to go through and look at all of these, all of these um, titles, because when you click on them, um, they all expand into much more. And these are all different pages that you can add into your CMA. Okay. And a lot of them are really good, just depending on your client and depending on how much information they need or they want. You know, if they are, um, if, if they're, if they're more, um, if, if they're more detail oriented and they want to know every single inch of the process and every step, then you want to give them as much information as they can so they can feel comfortable with what is going on. But if you have people that are much more high level um, and they're much more macro at the way that they deal with things, then um, you, want to, um, you want to keep this as short as possible, okay? So, sorry. Okay. Um, so, um, so usually what I use um, is, well, actually what I'll do is I'll just, so I use this cover sheet with a border. It's just a nicer presentation. Um, I can I can add all of these just so you can see, you know, what's actually I don't have to do that. So you can if you want to add everything under here, you can just click on this. Okay, click on the the title and it'll add everything. And that way, you know, it won't it, it won't take you forever to build this. Now. One thing that you'll notice, um, well not notice, but one thing that I, I would say is that generally when I'm building these out, um, I just use the cover sheet with the border, the price adjustments, which is the thing that shows, that compares each house to each other. Um, so your subject house to, you know, the houses that you're, that, that have already sold. Um, so I use that. And then, um, Let's see, I'll do the results statistics. So what that does is it's a high level roll up of the neighborhood that you're looking in and, it, and all the houses that you're looking at, it gives a high level, um, a high level like assessment and it's just like an average max min of these houses, right? And then that gives your buyer a, a different point of view or different perspective of where their offer price is in the range of everything. Um, I usually don't put any of the additional pages in um, because a lot of this stuff I talk to my clients about um, in the buyer's presentation. So, um, but if you, if you want to reiterate that, you can definitely do that. There's no issue with that. And then I put in a CMA map. Um, the CMA map doesn't necessarily work for a building. Um, for a condo, but if you have townhouses or if you have single family homes, it shows where all of the all of the all of the comps are compared to the actual subject house. Okay. So if you have house, if your if your subject house is in the back of a neighborhood and it's facing, you know, the the woods or the trees and it has more privacy than some homes on the front of the neighborhood that's on a main busy road then your house is going to be much more expensive because there are more people that want that house. Okay. And there's usually a, a lot premium, you know, associated with that. Um, so um, it's just, it's just knowing things like that. Um, that's going to help you out in this. Um, but that's what, that's where this map is going to help you out as well. Okay. So once you get everything in the selected pages here, um, then you'll just go to the next to the next thing, which is subject. And this means the subject house, okay? So there are multiple ways that you can fill in um, the subject property. Um, and so usually you can fill in by public records, cross property listings in an autofill form, or you can fill out information uh, that you have, um, or you can just fill it in manually. I usually do the cross property listing. And so I do that. And I type in 3,800 Fairfax. Okay. 
which is weird. Um, oh, that's because I didn't put that in. Okay. So now we do results and here we go. So this is the house that we're interested in buying. So that's the subject property and we fill from the selected. Okay. So what this does is it pulls in the initial photo and the information from the listing. Okay. It has all the remarks, um, all of that good stuff. Um, and so um, you can, you can look at that, make sure that it has all the information that you know of, and it should, because um, it's pulling everything from everything from uh, from the listing. Now, there's some things that we're going to um, that we typically uh, that we typically assess for that's not on here. Uh, one thing is condition. So, what I typically do um, is just type in condition, hit OK. Um, Isn't property condition in the prop, uh, features? If you go up a little bit. Features? Yeah. Yeah, down, go down. Keep going, down. Stop right there. See property condition, very good. Oh, OK. Yeah, they must have uh, updated this. Because it was not like that. So good. Yep. So you don't have to do that anymore. So we'll delete that. Okay, perfect. So property condition is there. Um, and let's see what else is here. They have square foot. Yeah, square footage is there. Okay. Alrighty. So, um, and if there's anything that you need to assess on that's not here, you can always come back to this tab. So we'll just move over to the next thing. Uh, cover. So this is going to be your cover page. Um, and it just has the general information. Um, if you know your client's address, um, you can put that in phone number, all of that stuff. It makes it a little more personable uh, to them and a little more tailored to them. Um, so you put that information in here. If you want to put in another photo, you can do that. Um, you know, just make sure you're following the 1440 to 1080 pixels, uh, and then it'll fit in perfectly here. All right, so comparables. Um, the comparables, it automatically pulls in. Um, so when we created the CR, the CMA, um, it, al it already had uh, the, well, when we created the CMA, we had these already selected and then we hit CMA. So that's what it pulled in. The thing is, we're not going to compare this bottom one. So you're going to click on that and you're going to remove selected. All right. And so now you have these three that have sold um, in the last two months. Well, the last month for these two, this one very recent and then this one a couple months ago, but it's okay. It's right on the edge. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, actually, no, that's a three month. We're at six months. So the thing to know is that uh, depending on the markets and depending on the appraiser, sometimes they appraise as, as least as 30 days out. So sometimes uh, if it's a hot market and things are moving really quickly, <clears throat> excuse me, then they will be, they will be looking all the out at all the houses that are selling last month. Okay. And so that's why they look from zero um, to uh, six months, because depending on when the market is, um, you know, they, they were what what's going on in the market, they give themselves that leeway. And um, what they do is they'll take zero to, to six months in, in a one mile rate or in, in the very next neighbor, in that neighborhood. So let's say you're doing a single family home or a townhouse, they'll look in that neighborhood first. If they can't find anything in that period, then they'll do a one mile radius and they'll look for something similar. Uh, and similar is uh, like townhouse, like square footage, you know, or single family, you know. So if it's single family, they're looking for a single family that looks the same, okay? Um, so if it's a ranch style home, 
then they're not going to be pulling a colonial. They're going to go uh, one mile and then as much as two miles out and six months ago to find a ranch style house that has sold that is very similar to your house. Okay. So um, that that's just a little insight to how complicated it can get. Um, but <clears throat> excuse me for this. This is where we are. We have we have three in the building that have sold, and that's perfect. Um, we'll go to the map, and you'll see they're all you know one, two, and three, uh, and four. They're all in the same area, so the map is not really that much of a help. Um, the adjustments. So these are the adjustments. Well, we we're going to start making adjustments on the homes. And so um, I have a um, I have a form that I use, and I don't know if you guys can still see. Can you guys see my um, my screen still? My Word document here. Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's see. All right, so this is this is a form that I got um, when I used to be on a team uh, a couple of years back, and um, this was created uh, as a result of a conversation with um, an appraiser, um, and this gives you a roundabout idea of what of what you know things go for and what they adjust you know homes for. Now, obviously the different areas, it's not gonna be the same amounts. Um, I have used this um, and you know, if, I'm, if I'm doing a million dollar home, I kind of guesstimate. Um, I did have a, a conversation with an appraiser just recently and what she was telling me is that what they generally do um, is they go back and they look over you know, a five year period and they find, you know, when, you know, when homes have been sold that are similar and they have like different bedrooms, different bathrooms, all that stuff. And they, they generally take the temperature. So they'll say, okay, typically there's like a, you know, a $10,000, you know, difference for bedroom. Right. And so if I were to do that and I, I can show you, I, I did that on this property and it actually funny enough, it actually ended up being a $10,000 difference um, for the bedroom upgrade. Um, but, um, but that's what I would, I mean, you can use this as a really quick and dirty um, because really when we're doing the CMAs, we're not telling our clients, we're not telling them what the price should be. We're telling them the range. And so the closer they get to the bottom range, the bottom part of the range, the better off a deal would be for them. The closer they get to the top range and they should not go over that top price, then that would be a bad deal for them. Um, and so really the idea is that um, if you sell your client, let's say, so one mistake I made when I, when I first, like my first house that I sold to my client, um, I think he was pre-approved to like 700, but we were buying a house at like 520 and we ended up um, settling for 530. And I thought it was okay because of course he's, you know, approved for it, but the CMA said 520 was the highest. And so, um, and so we, we actually had to back out of the deal because what happens is if he buys high, then when he goes to sell, he's not going to make that money back. Um, and so, you know, usually what I sell to my clients is that you make money when you, when you purchase the property, not when you sell it. Meaning the lower you buy it for, that's when you make money. But if you, if you buy over market, then you're going to be working years to, to make that up and then you'll start making money. So just be just you just make sure you're aware of what those boundaries are and you manage the sale or the you manage the purchase or the sale based on those numbers. 
Um, okay, so we are here. Um, and so the first property, uh, unit 501, um, we see that there's a $5,000 um, $5, concession. So usually what I do is I'll take $5,000 off of that because when we are looking at this, we're, the whole purpose of doing these adjustments is saying, okay, this property is active, this property is sold. If this property were sold at the same time as this, what would this value be, okay? And so what we're trying to do is, is compare this to that, okay? So this has one more full bathroom, okay? So over here, I have $5,000 for that. And so we're saying that you're, you're to the good $5,000, okay? So we'll add $5,000 to that. And this one, um, it is 400 square feet more. So yeah, so the, the general rule for this, if your condo that you're, that you're assessing against um, falls within a 20% radius of your size, then, um, then it's all considered the same size, okay? So 20% above, um, which would be uh, 1,800, or 20% 20, 20 below, which would be uh, 1,200, uh, those would be, so 1,200 to 1,800 would be the same size as a 1,500 uh, in the appraiser's eyes. Now, this one is at 1,110. So what you would do is, um, you would do the $40 per square foot. But like I said, once again, you'd wanna make sure that $40 a square foot um, is appropriate adjustment for that size, okay? And so, um, but we're gonna assume that it is, so $40 a square foot times, what is that, 90? Let's see if I can find the calculator. Okay, so 3,600. So we'll take $3,600. Um, all right, um, all of these parking spaces, they're the same, or garage spaces, they're the same. Um, garages in single family and townhouses are a big different, a big deal. Um, so make sure you're capturing for that and also in units. Um, in depending on, depending on uh, the townhouse, um, there are in units that are bigger. So different communities have bigger townhouses on the in units. Um, so make sure you understand, you know, those differences when you're, when you're purchasing or selling. Um, yep. So this house would be 461.6 based on this. Okay. And the reason is they sold for 458, but then they got a concession amount. So the reason why we took that away is because they really, they really sold for 453. And so- May I ask a question? Yes. What's the difference between above grade and below grade? Uh, above ground and below ground. So if you- Oh. Yeah. So anything in a basement, a basement doesn't count as above grade mm -hmm. um, because the government is not taxing on that. Okay. Yeah. Question. All right, so um, so pretty much uh, we've got everything. Um, we do want to look at condition. So let's go back comparables. So we'll look at this one. Hey, what? Yes. Yeah, question on, on the above grade. Um, I mean, a condo, so they're going to have windows on let's say the side facing outside, 
but they could be structured so that they go out the front door and they're actually end up being below grade. I mean, it's possible. Is that, does that come into play in, in, uh, in determining the value? Um, or, or condos are always assumed to be above grade. Yeah, I mean, I don't know of a condo that would be below grade. Um, Cause I mean, even, I think even, yeah, I, I don't know any condos that are below grade. Like I don't, I don't know any, I've never seen them. I mean, I'm <laughs> sure that it could be, but I'm, I'm sure that in that, in that instance, um, that would still be considered above grade. Uh, only because only because that that's I mean in my mind and uh, if somebody has more experience with this um, please <laughs> please chime in but you know in my mind this really this really um, pertains to a house um, or a townhouse where you have like multiple levels in one, one unit um, and it's you know, it's all belonging to one person, but you could have a piece of your actual living square footage that's below grade or below ground. And um, they're just not taxing on that. Um, they're just taxing on anything that's built above. Sure. So that's how I kind of saw it. Now, as it relates to condos, um, I'm sure you're still getting, even if your condo is underground, I'm sure you're still getting taxed on that. Okay. <clears throat> that's fair. Okay. Hey, well, can I ask a question? Sure. Going back to the square footage, you said if it's within 20%, then you leave it alone, right? Yeah, it's all considered being the same. Okay, so if it's outside of 20%, we would take the difference between the absolute values of each, or will we, like, that's what you did, but I, w I was thinking that you were going to say, take the difference where it starts at the 20%. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I mean? Yeah. 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 That's a good question. Um, I usually, I, I've wrestled back and forth, but I usually just take it from the point at which, not that it's just 20%, but the point at which it actually is. Okay. Yeah. Um, only because I think, I think the 20% just stops uh, everyone from kind of calculating and, and trying to be like, okay, well, I have 1,100 square feet and you have 1,200 square feet, so mine is bigger, you know? Right, right. So I think it's really like trying to make sure that you're far enough away to be like, okay, now we start calculating okay. the actual differences. Thank you. You're welcome. Because you're still purchasing that difference. You're not purchasing the 20%. You're purchasing the, right. the eleven ten versus the fifteen hundred, which is a big difference. Right. Okay. Got it. Okay. Good question. So, would you not um, adjust for a below grade bedroom because there are legitimate bedrooms that um, a lot, especially in um, certain areas of Virginia, um, uh, like the Fredericksburg area. The home, the basement, half of it could be a walkout and the other part backs up below, uh, below the ground. But to have a legitimate be uh, bedroom, you have to have like, you know, an egress window, you know, door or something, or, you know, there. Um, mm -hmm. And there are a lot of homes that have that. So it is considered a bedroom. So mm -hmm. I've seen homes that list four bedrooms, but three of the bedrooms are in uh, upstairs but you have one in the basement. Yeah. How do you do a comparable with that? Like, does that count? Like, do you, you know, I just not sure how that works. Yeah, there's, there's not a, I mean, I, I don't adjust for that. Okay. Um, I adjust for, so, I mean, if I'm looking at a four bedroom versus a three bedroom and both of them have uh, three or four above ground, then uh, that's when I adjust it. But if both of them have three bedrooms above ground, and then there's one, full, you know, like you said, has the egress and all that closet door, then it's, you know, I, I don't adjust, I don't add 10,000 for that. Okay, because I've seen homes where they're adding and you go and you look, okay, you have a walkout basement, 
you have this bedroom in the in the basement and it's a legitimate base uh bedroom but you still only have three bedrooms on the upper level and they're charging way more yeah yeah exactly um and there's i mean there's no rule to say that you can't do that um i mean there's obviously a difference between between what I say that a house is worth and what the seller says the house is worth, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's that's where the negotiation comes in. Uh, you know, if if it's a market where you know it's it's more balanced, um, but I mean, where where we have a market that's a seller's market, um, you know, they're pretty much asking you know whatever for these homes, and people are buying them. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I don't usually adjust for them. And that's where this is part science. So this is the science part. Um, and then there's an art part. Um, because there, I mean, there are plenty of times where I've done the science and it still doesn't match up to, you know, what what people are paying or what people are asking. Um, and so then that's when you have to really consult your clients um, as to what's going on. Um, and this is really just determining the value. Um, now, if there are other homes that are similar to that um, in in Virginia that have sold for the same price or a little bit less than what they're asking, um, you know, because really what you, one thing that you want to do is make sure that you're going to get this appraised because you don't want to put your, your buyer in the position of it not being, not appraising. And then like trying to figure out, you know, what are you going to do? And so that's, that's one of the biggest reasons why we do this. Um, Cause the bank is definitely not going to let them overpay. So, I mean, the seller could feel like it's worth, you know, $20,000 more, but if the bank is not going to lend it, then, you know, what are they going to do? Thank right. you. You're welcome. Um, okay, so, oh, so what I was saying is at this point, we're just going to look for condition and we see, okay, they have what looks like original cabinets, but maybe they put granite here. Um, stainless steel appliances, galley kitchen. So they haven't, I mean, they put in, that looks like. That looks like hardwood. Yeah, that, that's hardwood. So they have hardwood. So it looks pretty clean. You know, a nice place. The bathrooms, uh, sort of updated. I mean, they're not they're not new. They look like maybe 1990s, 90, I don't know, maybe 2000s upgrade. But it's still livable. Um, let's see, HVAC. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Looks like that is pretty new. Okay, so um, we know that that's, you know, so it seems like it's it's pretty upgraded. So I don't know if we would put, we would make any any changes there. I mean, what we're, what the, what the appraisers look for is the fact that you have hardwood versus carpet or like old old vinyl versus like tile. You know, you have um, different countertops. Now, they, if you have granite and let's say, let's say you're in this apartment and somebody puts in marble floors, you don't get, you don't get much more value only because it's not a typical thing that you see, you know, in this, this sort of area. Now, if you were in Great Falls or McLean and you didn't have marble floors and you would probably get docked for that. So, um, you know, when you're telling your clients, you know, you know what to do to their house, make sure that they don't over, over, um, over design uh, so that, you know, they can get the value out and make sure that you understand, like, make sure you go to each of the comparables and look to see what materials they had in their properties 
and you base your price based on that. Okay. Cause that's not that it's in bad condition, but let's say one of these homes has a brand new renovation and they have brand new everything in there. Like not, not necessarily that it was a flip, but you know, they, they redid it and then they, they're moving out. Right. So let's say it's all new within the last three years. Uh, that's going to show a lot better and that's going to cost a lot more than what the house is that we just looked at. Um, while that one was clean, it's just not, it's not the same level of upgrade. So, and it, you can tell that it's a little bit older. So um, all of those things are things that you have to look at um, when, when doing these adjustments. Um, but I, I wouldn't make any adjustment here. So we're looking at, you know, a $3,600 adjustment sales price of 461.6. So, um, and that, that's what we're saying that this one would go for. So, so then we would do the next one. And the next one, um, you go through and you do the same thing. Um, this didn't have any seller concession. Um, we have one ba bathroom, so $5,000. Same thing here, 3,600. Um, and let me look at, here. is it an issue that the tax assessed value is so different? Um, let me take a look at that really quick. Do you have adjustments for tax assessed value too? Because it's like when it's twice difference. Right. Yeah. Um, hold on for one second. So these people have done work to this place. Um, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. So, all right. So um, let me take a look at this. Mm. When did this sell? All right, 18, 12. Oh, I didn't even look at the right one. All right, um, let's see. Public record, okay. Twenty twenty. Yeah. taxable amount. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure as to why that is um, such a difference. So that's four, okay. Okay, I don't know how to get rid of this. All right, um, so if I go back to here, I'm just curious about the other ones. So this one, this one, the annual tax is thirty nine twenty two. So I wonder. Hmm, I'm almost wondering if those are if that's the case. For all of them. Yeah. 
See, I'm wonder, I, I wonder if that's the difference for, because all of them are that same price or that same, uh, right around that same annual tax. But the one that we, that we have um, that we're looking at, this one is a, I think they said it's a one bedroom and a den. with two full baths. So I wonder if that seems like a lot to pay for, for the difference. In general, do you make any adjustments for such a tax difference? No. No, we don't make any, any different, any changes for, or any assessment or yeah, any assessments for that. Because uh, that doesn't play in the actual value of the property. Oh, it does have a value for There's also a deeded garage with this property. Spot. I'm sorry? In the description, there's also a deeded garage spot and an extra storage unit. So would that add to the cost maybe? Would that be the difference? No, because I, I don't, I mean, I would have to look to see if the other ones were like that. Um, but, I mean, because usually, I mean, a lot of these buildings, they allow people to have um, at least one parking space. Um, now, now, in D.C., it's not the case. Um, but in Arlington, um, I think most of them come, and I, I could be wrong, but I think, I think there's a good amount of them that come with a parking space. It's just when I'm looking at investment properties, I always look what my tax costs are and what my maintenance costs are, and that's what determines the price. So to me, it is part of adjustment. Yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't. If I have to pay twice the tax, to me, the value of this property is lower. Yeah, but that's to you. But what I'm saying to you is that the bank is the one that's determining the value and it, they don't care what the taxes are. Like they're, they're looking at things that are tangible. Yeah, to see yeah, yeah. No, I understand the bank's position. But yeah, but I'm just saying. Positions for clients other than the banks. Yeah, and that's, that's what, so when you're, when you're getting to this point that you're doing this for your client, like they've already gone past that to say, I want to write on this house, how much should I write the contract for, right? That's why you do this. Like you don't do this just because, you know, they're looking and they think, oh, you know, that would be nice, but I'm not sure. Um, you wouldn't go through like all of this, like to, to have them like come back and say no. So like what you're saying that, I mean, that's true. Yeah. I mean, but the thing is like people see, so there are things that, there are things that agents or that sellers do to the house to, um, to get a reaction or to, to garner emotion from the buyer, right? But then those things that get emotion out of the buyer is not the same things that communicate value to a bank. And right. so that's why we're looking at like the number of rooms and the condition and like, you know, all of these things that don't necessarily mean anything to a buyer. So do you only do this uh, CMA competitive marketing analysis only from the banks, for, for the bank and from the bank standpoint and you just don't do it to your client? No, I do, I do. Even thinking like to buy or not to buy? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part. Uh, like you don't do it for a client when he's still thinking to buy or not to buy, but you're only doing that when there's already banking finance in question. No, I do it when my client says, this is the place that we want to write an offer on. And so for me to write an offer and to be confident, because what's going to happen is you could, you could very well write an offer and and the seller says, no, we, we don't want that. And they start, you start negotiating. 
Well, you have to have you have to have like some solid numbers to know like what your negotiation plan is. And this gives you the solid numbers, right? Because the thing is, you know that you analyze this property the same way that the bank would. So even after you negotiate with the sellers and you get a ratified contract, you're pretty confident that this is going to go through and get approved by the bank. And that's why I do it. Um, because I want to make sure that after, we're not wasting our time. Mm -hmm. So that's why, that's why I make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this from the same standpoint that the bank would, as long as my clients are okay with it and they have to be okay with the taxes, um, or we just wouldn't write on it. And same thing with condo fee, you know, cause that's something else that could blow up, but that's not anything that the bank necessarily cares about. But if the condo fees are too high, <clears throat> excuse me. If the condo fees are too high, then your client may not qualify for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I mean, it's you know, so it, it's it's all it's all these little nuances, but you know, simply that's what they are. <clears throat> okay, so the first one is that. The second one is 538, and we'll just say this third one, uh, same thing. All right, so we say 517, 850, okay? So, um, now, when I started talking to you, I, I told you we're not trying to tell our clients what, what the price is. We're trying to tell them what the range is, okay? So, <clears throat> excuse me. So what you wanna do is you wanna find, um, you wanna find at least three homes um, so that you can give them a good range. And it looks like our range, that's 517, or 518, 538 is on the high end and 461. So, I mean, I think that this, I mean, I would, I would probably stay away from this because this seems very low for some reason. Um, who knows why they sold that low. So, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking that your price is somewhere between 517 and 538. Um, and that, that would be the range that I would, I mean, just at a, at a, without like doing a lot of analysis and very quickly, that's the range that I would tell them, you know, that we'd have to offer in. And, you know, if they wanted to write at like 515, um, I would be okay with that. And the reason I'd be okay with that is because um, the market, like I said, is very, it's very soft. And so if you find somebody that wants to, you know, buy in a condo, then they probably have a really good shot at getting a really good deal at this point. So, um, so one thing that I was going to bring up, okay, so that, so I have all these adjustments here. Um, the pricing, these are all of the, these are all of the numbers that we just went through. Um, and then you just finish this and you can view your CMA at this point. Okay. Um, so this is this is the cover sheet with the border, um, and then you have the price adjustments. So this shows you all the information that we went through. Uh, when you when you send this to your client, make sure you go through this line by line with them so they know what they're looking at. Okay, don't just send it over to them and let them read it because it's going to confuse them um, and they're not going to know. Um, Here's that summary of properties that I was telling you about. It's usually pretty helpful. Um, 
and this is saying even lower. So they're, I mean, they're taking into account that 458. So they're saying, you know, 502. And it's, you know, it's, it's all your call. You know, it's, it's, it's all, it's all, um, because the more time you spend with us, the numbers are going to start feeling a lot different to you. Okay. And that's why I usually say it's about two hours. Um, because there's a lot of different angles you have to look at it. Um, it has a subject property, that information. These are all the pages that we selected, days on market. Um, and so I'm guessing this 1812, let's see which one that was. 1812. That one sold for 530 and that stayed on the market the shortest amount of time. So that shows you that that was the right price for that house. This one, 40 days, that's a little long. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so these are all, like I said, these are all the different pages. I would encourage you to kind of take a look at them. Um, one thing that I wanted to also bring up, um, we only have three more minutes, but one thing I wanted to show you, and I can send this all, I can send this out to you and I can send this other thing out to you as well. Um, so there's, and I can send this out to you also. Um, oh, here we go. No, here we go, this. So there's this modeling impact report, remodeling impact report that's put out every single year by the National Association a realtors research group and it's it's in it's in combination with nari which is um i think it's like the remodeling institute like national association remodeling institute or something like that um and so every single year they go through and they 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 talk to a bunch of realtors and see okay what diy projects did your clients do and what was the value of return for them, okay? And so um, they go through the interior projects and they'll say, okay, master suite, owner suite, you know, the reasons why they're doing the project um, and what the joy score is, and then how much cost recovery. So they put out 150,000, they got 75 back. And so then that's a 50% uh, return on value. Okay. So they go through kitchen upgrades, renovations, bathroom renovations, um, adding a new bathroom, basement conversion to living room. Um, so they go through all of these things. One thing that I found interesting is the roof. And if I find it, I think the roof was like 109% return on value, which was the only thing that was over 100%. Um, and so I can send this to you and what this does is it helps you gauge, um, like get an idea of what it would cost for certain things, um, for your clients to do. And so when you're looking at, you know, how much is, how much does a kitchen cost generally, this gives you a decent understanding, but then you have to, you can't, you can't assess the whole cost to, the purchase you have to know that only they're only going to get 50 percent back so if you think that the that the kitchen renovation must have cost forty five thousand dollars well you can only attribute um what is that twenty two fifty to it okay so or twenty two five hundred to it so um you know the the percentages are the things that actually make the difference and trying to figure out what something is worth is when you're trying to assess uh, what the value of somebody's renovation would be. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes, it does. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, so it's six o'clock. Um, I'll send this out to you as well. Um, actually, hey, question. Is this going to be posted on your YouTube? If I miss some, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. 
I'm oh. sorry. I said, will this be posted on the YouTube um, page in yes. case you miss some? Yes. It, it definitely okay. Is. okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, if everybody could put your email addresses in the chat box, then I can make sure that I get these out to you. Um, and this is just, you know, I, I just created this myself, so I wouldn't have to go back through all the slides. And it's just a quick, you know, quick guide as to, you know, what the prices are and then what those, what those percentage of returns are. Okay. So, um, oh, there it is. New roof is 107, new floors, 106, floor refinishing, 100%. So, at any rate, um, I'll send all this stuff out to you. Um, and I definitely appreciate you all coming out. Um, does anyone have any questions before we adjourn? Any additional questions? Just one question. So if um, a property has done any upgrades, is that usually listed in features or anything like that without having to look at the picture? Um, so yeah, a good listing agent will call out all the upgrades because they're trying to sell the house. Um, okay. Some, some agents are kind of lazy, but you know, if, if, a, if a renovation has been done within five years, you can tell it. I mean, you can tell, you know, just by colors or just materials, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I was just thinking if you're trying to do a filter on features without having to look at the photos. Oh, you do that? Yeah. no, no. Sometimes there's like if the client says, I only want people who did upgraded bathrooms in the last three years. Yeah, that'd be nice. That. But I, I don't think that that's an option to even put in a listing. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I don't think you can filter on that. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Okay, well, thank you all for coming out. Um, tomorrow's class, I forget what it is, but we do have a class at five o'clock. Um, and if you are around, please feel free to join. I think it might even be the same link. So if you're around, definitely pop in. Thank it's you. It's technology and marketing services. Uh, oh, yeah. Marketing resource. Kylie Roy Marketing, exactly. That should be a great class. I'm sorry, David, I can't, I can't hear you. He's still muted. Go ahead, David. Yes. Yep. What were you saying? Yeah, I, I was looking how to put it in the group chat, my address. Uh, I'd like you to send me the stuff. Okay. I, I know your address, so I'll, I'll put you in there. Hey, that was an excellent presentation on adjustments. I've never seen it uh, so well done. That's good. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad it helped. All right, everyone. Have a great evening. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. If not, um, I'll see you at the next class. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night.